Town officials set to release the operating budget. Town Council to hear capital improvement plans for Barnesville Public Schools this week. Plus, a Main Street restaurant is changing hands. These stories and more on this episode of Barnstable Today. It's Monday, May 4th, 2015. I'm Sarah Mannell. Town officials are putting the final touches on the operating budget this week. Town Manager Tom Lynch says he expects to have the operating budget to the printer by the end of the week. Uh, I've been working on the my budget statement that tries to frame, uh, you know, the principles we use behind developing uh, the budget. We'll be working on that uh, again today, finishing that up. Uh, Mark Milne has been um, uh, cloistered in a bunker trying to uh, get all of the uh, the changes and the numbers. Uh, right, so when it goes to, to print, we don't have, <coughs> you know, any issues that we need to resolve. Uh, I'm finding already through the, the capital budget that, you know, there, due to circumstances beyond individuals' control, there's an item that might need to be rescinded. Uh, we're coming up with the airport. They've had a, uh, a couple of instances where, uh, you know, they may have to rescind one item because they're not ready for permitting, and uh. <coughs> there was another uh, just late last Friday, Bud Briel. Uh, called to say, gee, that we open bids and we've got a, you know, rather, uh, you know, it, the favorable market we have been anticipating has kind of been backing off because uh, the economy seems to be moving again and contractors have more work and uh, their bids have been a little higher than we might have anticipated. So there's one item that he needs to get on to kind of supplement what he has. And so those things will happen. We understand that through the course of it. But with our operating budget, we like to be as accurate as possible so that we don't have to make any changes uh, when we do that. Lynch says Town Council will begin to work on the operating budget once the debate on the capital improvement plan is complete. Town Council will continue that debate this week. Superintendent of Schools Dr. Mary Schakowsky says she will be making her capital improvement budget presentation with David Kenyok and Gareth Markwell at this week's meeting. Phases two and three of our capital improvement project for next year, which includes the removal of the portable trailers at BWB, and uh, Hyannis West adding on four additional classrooms. So it is phase two. Um, I'll be presenting uh, an overview of, of the impact of the project, and uh, this will end, if they approve the, uh, these two projects, it will end all the portable trailers that we have currently in the district, and uh, we're certainly looking forward. There will be over at BWB a, a media center that they're going to be using with the uh, permanent modular construction. And then uh, at High West, these will be additional kindergarten classrooms. But I can tell you that along with this project and the early learning project, it's moving along. They're going to be setting down the uh, modulars this week, actually over at Hyannis West for the new early learning center. I spoke with Dave Kenyak last week, and the crane is going to hoist them down uh, and set them in place. So it, it is moving very, very quickly, and I'm hopeful that uh, – you know, I've been keeping the council informed as well as the school committee on phases two and three, and I'm hoping that I'll have their support for those two projects. And town council meets this Thursday at 7 o'clock in the town hall hearing room. Well, composting it could soon be easier for Barnstable residents. The town's transfer station is considering a pilot program that would allow residents to recycle compostable food scraps. Energy coordinator Richard Elric says they are now in the planning stage. Meeting with uh, Bobby Lovell to talk over the specifics, uh, Dave Quinn from the county as well. And we're hoping uh, that we can get something in place uh, sometime this summer. Uh, again, uh, no firm decisions have been made yet on the timing. But I, I think it's important for people to know that when you look at all of the uh, solid waste that gets disposed of, approximately 20% of that by, by weight uh, are kitchen scraps. Mm. So if we can get a proportion of our population to either do more uh, composting at home or to take advantage of, of a, a program uh, at the transfer station, uh, that'll be helpful. It'll save them, certainly, and it's obviously much better, better for the environment as well. Uh, we're looking forward uh, to uh, working with MassDEP uh, about this as well because they're going to be giving us some grants that will help us get the project going. Mm -hmm. um, it's almost impossible to anticipate how many people would participate right. in, in the program. Uh, we've got about 
uh, 8,000 or so, 8,500 or so folks who utilize the transfer station for dropping off their trash. Um, uh, and I have really no way of knowing you know, how many people would actually choose that method to dispose of their, uh, their kitchen right. scraps. But it'll be available uh, in already in towns uh, such as Chatham uh, and Mashpee. They have programs. And just so people are a, a little bit understanding of how the, the program works, uh, people would be uh, provided with or made would be made available to them five uh, gallon buckets oh, great. that they could you put the scraps in and then they'd bring them to the transfer station and we'd have a specific area with specific containers that are kept tight so that we don't have to worry about critters funky and smells, rodents right, and funny exactly. smells and things like that. Um, and then once a week or so, depending on the demand, uh, people from for example, uh, the Watts Family Farm, which is mm. one of the locations here uh, on the Cape in Falmouth, where they actually will collect your kitchen scraps, use it for compost uh, to enhance the, the, the land for the farm. Great. So we're, we're pretty excited about it. Um, we've still got some work to do to, to, to develop the program. Almerick says there is no official timeline for the pilot launch, but hopes to see it implemented sometime this summer. A Main Street eatery is changing hands. 586 on Main Street will soon be known as Tap City Grill. Attorney Stephen Pizzuti spoke about plans for the new restaurant during this morning's licensing authority hearing. To my left is Tim White. Uh, as, if you've taken a look at his resume, uh, it's ex extensive. Um, he's been in the food and beverage industry his entire working life practically. Um, he actually opened the British Beer Company on Main Street many years ago and became ultimately the director of operations for all of their facilities. Uh, he's been consulting. He worked in, in, uh, for Cisco Corporation, which is a large purveyor, uh, national purveyor of food. Uh, and he actually was an executive chef at the 1620 restaurant in Plymouth. Um, with uh, Tim, um, I don't think you're going to find uh, a better staffed organization with the more knowledge in the food and beverage. We have Ben Suro, who is the manager at uh, De Parma's in, uh, in West Yarmouth, which is a very successful Italian restaurant. We have Chris Cunatis, who has been uh, in the kitchen and overseeing uh, the food service at the Yarmouth House restaurant and, uh, and really all of their facilities. Um, I'm very proud to be able to introduce uh, Tim to you if you didn't know him because uh, what he has come up with with um, the wealth of knowledge <coughs> and uh, with the experience of his partners here, he's come up with a concept that I think is going to be absolutely fabulous for Main Street. What they're doing is um, they're going to be uh, operating a 12, uh, 28 tap um, um, uh, beer, beer service with local purveyors of beer, custom purveyors. They're going to be utilizing a lot of local produce. Um, and it's really a concept that's <coughs> taken off around the country and world, as a matter of fact. Uh, and I think that it's really going to add another dimension to Main Street. I think they're going to be very successful. And if you have any questions whatsoever, we'd be happy to answer them. And the licensing board approved that transfer. Because of severe weather and icing over the winter months, 36 pilings in Barnstable Harbor must be replaced before the dock system can be installed. The project has been slightly delayed, but work is scheduled to begin early next week. All piling work is expected to be complete by Memorial Day weekend. Well, be sure to tune in to our hour-long news program, Barnstable This Morning, weekdays at 7 a.m. On tomorrow's show, we will chat with Police Chief Paul McDonald. We'll learn more about the Glenna Cole Fund for Hope during our community profile segment. Plus, we'll have all the news and information you need. For Barnstable Today, I'm Sarah Mannell.